we had chapter 14, which uh, covered his Mendel and his G idea. So let's start with the basics. Gardner Mendel chose pea plants because they provided the basis for studying a number of variant characters, <coughs> which are also known as traits, in an elusive layout. So he could easily manipulate them in mating. And they have a short generation, but they produce a large number of offspring. And as you know, the law of probability, um, it's going to be obeyed with the larger sample that you have. So he chose like to use thousands of pea plants. And because of all these characteristics, it was really easy to monitor them with um, good efficiency. Let's go over some vocab. So cross-pollinization is the fertilization between two plants. And the process run as such, Mendel has removed the stamens from a flower, which we'll call A, and he transferred the sperm bearing pollen from stamens of a flower A to flower B to the egg bearing carpel of flower alpha. Okay. Okay. Um, once the pollinated carpel matured into a pod, he would harvest the pods, plant seeds, and then he would examine and evaluate the offspring. Yes, Jen. Wait, what's the carpal again? Wait, give us the picture again. That one. Is that on here? Yeah. Okay. So, this is the picture. So, He would take, he would take like uh, the pollen and he would put it from one plant into another plant. It's just like, they're just named different things. The carpal has the egg and the stamen has the sperm, so. Carpal is the top part, kind of. The, the carpal is the entire female part of the flower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why she said it has the egg. The stamen has the pollen, which contains the uh, sperm as well. Yeah. And then when you mix them, they have seeds. Basics of life. So he would track characteristics that only existed in two distinct and alternative forms, such as tall and short, purple and white flowers, um, wrinkled versus round seeds. Uh, he made sure to utilize only the true breeding plants in the pea generation. And true breeding, true breeding is an organism that produces offspring of the same variety over many generations of self-pollination. We'll go over it, but it's basically tall T, tall T, or little T, little T. So Mendel's cross-pollinization of two differing P P's, such as um, two T's and two little T's, or as um, a true breeding purple plant and a white plant, flowered one, was like the basic form of this experiment. Hybridization is another vocab word. It's the mating or crossing of two true breeding varieties because it uh, produces a number of different options, pretty much, right? Okay, so the pea generation is also known as the pear generation. And in Mendel's experiment, the two true breeding parents were the pea generation and they produced the offspring, which was first one were the, was the for, uh, F1 generation, and then Mendel's experiment, the hybrid offspring of the P generation. Does anybody have any questions? So what do you mean by F1? What does F1 stand for? Filial, and that, and that the Latin term is filial, and it means son. And the F1 generation is basically the first generation of offspring that came directly from the P generation, which were two true breeding varieties, and when they mix together, they have hybridization and they're now different, many different um, types of plants. F2 generation is the offspring of the pollinated F1 generation. So as you guys can see, it just goes down from the P generation to F1, F2, F3, and as far down as he wanted to go to be able to observe characteristics of heredity. Um, just went over this, F comes from the Latin word filial, which translates to sun in English. And um, an important thing to understand that is that if Mendel had ceased this experiment at the F1 generation, many of the fundamentals of hereditary would have been 
like obscured because he wouldn't have been able to see that sometimes there's a hidden trait because after the F1 generation, two purple plants were now able to make a white plant. And that didn't make sense because the plants are both purple. The previous uh, idea was that, um, and her, of heredity was that things would blend when they mated, such as if you had a tall and a short plant, a medium plant would happen. But the F1 plants had really purple plants and really white plants, it wasn't a blend. So he was kind of confused, but then when he saw F2 generation where a purple and a purple were able to make a white because they both had hidden traits that um, mated, uh, he was able to deduce that there's two of them for her. I'm just gonna look at some vocab really quick. Um, phenotype and um, genotype. And a phenotype is an organism's appearance or the observable traits. So it's like the traits <coughs> you can see, like when you first look at a person. And we have to remember that a phenotype refers to the psychological traits. Um, I mean, yeah, the sociological traits. Physi I'm sorry, physiological traits as well as. Um, the traits that relate directly to the appearance. And a genotype is um, the opposite, and it's like the genetic makeup, the stuff that we can't see. So what exactly is a gene? The gene is just basically the genetic material on a certain part of a chromosome that, kind of, that codes for a, specific, uh, for a specific trait. And so like alleles are just different expressions of these genes. And so an example of this, or if you can think of like this key plant idea, um, you can have a tall stem allele and you can have a dwarf allele and they, can, they both code for the same part, the same gene, but they're expressed in different ways. Okay, so we learned that there are two homologous chromosomes, one maternal and one paternal, and so these homologous chromosomes are going to hold the same kind of genes, like they're going to be the same type, but that doesn't mean that they're going to have the exact same alleles. And so a locus is just uh, a location on a gene, uh, on a chromosome where a gene is located. And so on the specific loci of this homologous chromosomes, two genes might be a little bit different because they come from different parents. And so you can have, so a plant, um, anything that has like two different types of alleles would be considered heterozygous. And so one allele will be considered dominant over the other allele. And what it, it, this basically means is that the dominant allele is just gonna be what you're gonna see in the phenotype. And so once again, like if we keep with this example, the tall stem is gonna be dominant over the we're supposed to say dwarf alleles um, in pea plants because that's the dominant trait. And the dominant traits are gonna be expressed in capital letters while the recessive traits are gonna be expressed in lowercase letters. And so homozygous just means that the two alleles are the same and homozygous dominant means two dominant alleles, whereas homozygous recessive means two recessive alleles. And in this case, the phenotype will express whatever allele it is that it has. And then this is just like another example of whether or not you have like detached earlobes or attached earlobes. You can see like yeah, it, the attached earlobes is the recessive gene, and the only time that this, um, this phenotype is gonna come out is when you have two recessive alleles, whereas at any other time, um, the dominant allele is gonna be, is gonna be the phenotype. 